Hi everybody, in this one let's take a look at solving a trig equation that requires using an identity to be solved. So I'm going to have sine of twice theta minus sine of theta equals zero. So here there isn't really much we can do because for example sine of two theta and sine of theta have different arguments. Two theta is not the same as theta. It doesn't look like there's anything that can be factored either. So what we can do is we write sine of two theta as follows. Step two. We write sine of 2 theta as 2 sine theta. This is a well-known identity that represents sine of 2 theta. And cosine of 2 theta minus sine theta equals 0 still. And at this point, you observe that, for example, there's a common factor of sine and sine in those two positions. Pull that outside your parentheses. That becomes sine on the outside, sine theta. And on the inside, what's left over are the parts that are not in yellow. Remember that in this position right here, where it says sine theta, it really means sine theta times 1. So you don't forget that 1, okay, when you factor. So this is like a 1 out. Okay, so copy the rest. 2 cosine theta minus 1 is still equal to 0. At this point, sine theta is one factor. 2 cosine theta minus 1 is the other factor. Set each one equal to 0 and solve. And I want to be very clear, we're looking for the general solution. So that's the one that you get. Okay, so sine of theta equal to zero, that's one factor set equal to zero, do, do that for the other one equal to zero. Let's solve the first one, so it says sine of theta equals zero. Let me grab my unit circle here for reference. I have it right here, I'm sure you can see it. So sine of theta equals zero, when does that occur? For example, that occurs over here, because you see that the sine of theta is this. It's the y coordinate, that, that's one place that it occurs. The other place that it occurs is at pi. So I'm imagining going along the circle in that direction, counterclockwise. Sometimes this is described by saying CCW, counterclockwise. So I've got zero and I've got pi, and this is in radian mode. But those are not the only solutions. Let's write those down for now, though. So over here, for this part, I'm going to say that theta is either equal, for example, to zero, theta is equal to pi. But that's not enough for the following reason. Let me go back to the picture. Once, for example, you identify pi as one of your solutions, then after that you could spin 2 pi and you can come back here, you see that? And after that again, you could spin another 2 pi and you can come back here. So you can keep spinning either counterclockwise or clockwise from your first solution like pi. For that reason, over here, I'm going to say the following. The solutions look like this in a more general form. So theta equals pi plus k times 2 pi. I hope you understand why this is so. Just the way I showed you in the picture. And the same thing with the other one. Theta is 0 plus k times 2 pi, which is just obviously times 2 pi. And the k is the number of turns that you take from the starting value. So this, these are two of the general solutions. This one, k 2 pi, and pi plus k times 2 pi. But this one here, let me go back to the picture, k to pi, just that one. So that looks like this. Identify zero as your starting angle. And then after that, you can just spin once around. That corresponds to setting k equal to one. And then after that, again, you can spin again and come back to there. You see that? That corresponds to k equals two. That's why I need those extra k times two pi pieces. Okay, so that takes care of sine of theta equals zero. We now have to repeat this for two cosine theta minus one equals zero. So we do that by solving for cosine theta. So you just add one, then you divide by two, so cosine theta equals one half. And what this says in English is, get the angles where the value of the x coordinate is equal to one half. Remember, this is just fancy for the x coordinate on the unit circle, that's all it is. So where the x coordinate equals one half, get those angles. Take a look at the unit circle here. So I get a look through my points, and when I look through them, let's see here the following. So over here at pi over three, that's one of them, because this right here, this is your x coordinate, it's equal to one half. So that's at pi over three, like that. And then the other one, well, where would that be? I spin all the way to over here which is 5 pi over 3, and you see that the value of the x coordinate is 1 half over there too. So that's the x coordinate right here, the 1 half in that position. So these are our two starting angles, the pi over 3 and then 5 pi over 3. 
So over here, I'm going to put the following down. That theta is equal to pi over 3. Theta is equal to 5 pi over 3. But again, that's not enough. The reason is that from each of these, you can now start spinning. So what I mean is this. Take a look. For example, let's take pi over 3 as a place to begin. Okay, so let me go back over here. I'm taking pi over 3 as my starting angle, which is this angle here. Okay, pi over 3, x equals 1 half. What I can do from here now is simply spin once around. You see that? And I come back over here. And again, x equals 1 half. And then after that, I can again spin another circle, another 2 pi, and come back to that same location where x again equals 1 half. I could also repeat this starting from 5 pi over 3 down below. But I think one of these is enough to get the idea across. So what this tells us is the following. Let me zoom out. That to include the general solution, you need to write the following. Theta equals pi over 3 plus k times 2 pi. k is just a number of turns. And then theta equals 5 pi over 3 plus k times 2 pi, where again, the k means the same thing in all of these, number of turns starting from your initial angle. And here, you can imagine that k is what we call an integer, and we call it that because it can have both positive or negative values. In other words, when k is positive, imagine this is one of these angles, pi over 3 right here, okay? Imagine this is pi over 3 right here. When k is positive, like k equals 1, it means begin at that angle, spin once around. For a positive value of k, get back to, you know, a larger angle that also solves the original equation. Don't forget that concept. For, on the other hand, when k has a value like negative 1, what that means is start with your pi over 3, which is your initial angle again, pi over 3, and then do plus 2 pi times negative 1. That basically amounts to just spinning in the opposite direction one time that way. So this will be corresponding to k equals negative 1. Spins once in the opposite direction. And or, or if k is equals negative 2, then you just spin twice in the opposite direction and so on. So our general solutions then are these parts right here. Let's not forget that. The yellow parts that I've highlighted. Let me zoom out. Maybe you can hopefully see all of the work from top to bottom just like that. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if it's been helpful. I'll see you in another video.